Come with us on a journey into the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable. We will test your senses and challenge your beliefs. A world where science and religion clash. Or do they? You will meet real people and hear real stories, but you will not believe. You will witness strange sights and hear strange sounds, but you will not believe. This is the New England Ghost Project. Welcome to the Nightmare. If you're not going to believe, what the hell are you listening for? <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Chronicles Morning Edition, right here on the net. New England Talks. Yes, it does. And we listen. No, we don't. We talk. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we'd listen, but never do. I can't stay still that long. I am Ron Kolick, your host. <laughs> and that laughing, chuckling <laughs> was chuckling. <laughs> the Professor Chortling. Lou Balassi. Chortling? Chortling. Chortling. Yeah. Also with me, back from her birthday bash <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> thank you we, we did not set on the air last year did, last week didn't we yes we did yes we made we, you did i did uh, yes you did hmm. i don't want to take credit <laughs> if it's not due to me it's fine <laughs> fine yeah <laughs> anyways <laughs> i uh, chose to keep her uh, private affairs private but if you wanted to <laughs> 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 so it begins so it begins <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes into the show. Yes. Back from her birthday bash last week where somebody may or may or not have <laughs> announced her birthday <laughs> is New England's scary godmother, Roxy Swicker. It was pretty cool. We actually went up to Moosehead Lake, and Moosehead. we were there for almost an entire week, and do you know what happened? We found... Water. Lots of water There's and lots of, water. of really cool stuff, and we found Sasquatch. You did not. We did. Wow. We brought him back in the form of an air freshener. <laughs> For you, Ron. <laughs> to go with your cryptozoology. To go with your cryptozoology. Like oh, we got to show that somewhere. Oh, we already did, didn't we? Did we show you that? Do it again. I don't know. Do we can show it again. I don't know. Is that close? Is that? That works. Uh, there he, oh, there he is. Oh, uh, that's you. See, that's you, but mine is going to be super big because. It's super big. Because it's sackwalk. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. <laughs> oh, he gets bigger than you think. And he's pine scented. Oh, good. Pine scented. So, well, I can't say enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Thank else you. would he be besides pine scented? <laughs> Maybe beef jerky scented. There you go. Yeah. Now he's yeah. got his beef jerky contact. Now you're talking. Yeah. Why don't they have beef jerky scented air freshness? Sasquatch air freshness? Yeah. They um, might. Some people don't romanticize the smell of beef jerky like maybe you and I do. Mm, that's a shame. <laughs> but there are bacon air fresheners. Don't know what they're missing. There, there are, are bacon there air fresheners? Yeah. yeah, I've there, seen them. Wow. Oh, oh, check this out. There are, There was this whole line of candles for men. Mm -hmm. It was like sweaty socks, beer. Wow. Yeah. All right, so I had this idea years ago. Uh -oh. So anyone can take this now and run with it because yeah. I gave up on it. Okay. <laughs> you had candles, little votive candles with different, uh, different scents. Mm -hmm. And they came in packs for television viewing. Like, for example. Ooh, this is like uh, smell TV. If you were watching NASCAR, you yes. could have like a burning gasoline. rubber. Yeah, yeah gasoline idea. and yeah. burning rubber or the Red Sox, some cut grass, maybe some popcorn. Hmm. Or maybe oh, you you're... put stuff together for <laughs> Oh, no, that's the old pack. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you put stuff together for specific movies. Great idea. So you had three or four cents for and a specific movie. you never ran with it. I never ran with it. So funny that you mentioned that because mm -hmm. I have I'm in touch with someone who does candles. Oh really? Yeah. See that was the missing point and missing link. So I didn't we know could, how to we do could, this. We stuff. could make this happen, Lou. Nice, I like it. Yeah. I don't know what they'd call them. Lose what? Lose wacky candles. Uh, no, no smell of vision. Yeah, smell of vision. Yeah, smell of vision. Yeah, All right, TV, so that's, I I will make a mental note of that. If there's any brain cells left up there. And uh, we will deal with that. Is any paper in that mental notebook? No. Okay. So, like, for the perfect storm, you could have a fish-smelling candle. And, you know, really get into the sea salt. Really get into, help get into the movie. You put a lot of thought into I this. I did. Yeah. This I was an tell. idea that, that I had, I was just I was ruminating on for years. This could be a thing. It mm -hmm. could be. What do you think, Ron? Want to do it? There's so many bad, <laughs> bad things we could do with that. Oh, I know. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's so cool. what would be a, a ghost-scented candle? What? What would be a ghost? Oh. If you were if you were watching a scary movie about ghosts. No, no, no. no. Uh, it you, wouldn't be about the ghosts. It would be about the setting right. of the movie. You would, you would, right. so, you would something that irritate you to get your senses up. That's what you would want. 
Something to put you on the edge. No, something just to get you into no, the no, movie. No, something to get you on the edge. Something okay. like that would get you in the mood thing for the ghosty things. Okay. Which, oddly enough, is the topic of our show. Oddly enough. How do you like that for it? On uh, today, we're going to talk about some of the things that have happened at Spirit Quest and, and people's opinions of them. But uh, <laughs> uh, what? Well, that'll be good. <laughs> people's opinions on them. Yes. So, anyways, on Saturday <laughs> night, in search, of, of course. Well, let, let me explain this whole thing before I get into it. Do tell. Uh, the, September twenty eighth, twenty ninth, and thirtieth, uh, we'll be holding our sixth annual in search of. Uh, no, 6th Annual Spirit Quest. Thank oh. you. It there is, it is. This year's theme is... In, I told you I needed coffee. It's just killer. <laughs> I got to start coming in here with a bucket of it in the morning. Anyways. There's it, coffee. Down, there's a box of Joe downstairs. Oh, yeah. If you just asked. It was in the conference room. There's muffins down there. There's everything. Oh, we'll need to remember this. I have to run down and get the... Well, I don't know if it's a regular... I wouldn't call it a regular occurrence, no, but today it just regular, happens to be. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah well... I have to suffer, and there's coffee downstairs. That's even more. It's like putting freaking salt in your wound. We need a showrunner. There's someone to get stuff that we need. Oh, yes. There you go. A gopher. I, okay. What? I was just going to get someone to run some coffee up, but... Could you? I can try. Get me a coffee, cream and sugar. This is a communication company. We'll see how the communication actually <laughs> works. Well, if it's anything like the Wi-Fi, you might as well just forget it. Coffee for everyone. <laughs> so anyways, and we are uh, September 28th, 29th, and 30th. We are doing a, a Spirit Quest it's an annual, event, annual event. You can come for the day, come for the night, come for the weekend. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is Saturday night is in search of fear. And this is a ghost hunt. And William James, who had an interest in spiritualism, famously wrote that ghosts do not cause us to feel fear. Rather, it is experience of fear that summons ghosts to us. This story will be put to test Saturday night when Steve Parson, Jeff Belanger, and myself, is whoever else we can dig up, uh, will go on a special ghost hunt at the VZ Spate uh, where we push fear to see if this is actually true. Mm. So you experiment to create fear to see if it draws what you're afraid of. Exactly. Nice. Isn't that mm. cool? Yeah. And I don't want to tip it off, but we get some horrible things lined up. Nice. Interesting. We took the we we made it a little, little survey of the things that irritate or uh, actually scare the crap out of people the most, and we're going to put them together for this special event. Is one of them the show? No, everybody loves this show. <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you are you kidding me? Have you seen the numbers? They're growing exponentially. Are we into triple digits? <laughs> Is that an exponentially? That's a good number, huh? Exponentially, yeah. Yeah, I like good. That. Yeah, <laughs> I picked that word up. So that goes right in with your fear candle or the fear candle I was talking about. Oh. We could get something that would... So in a uh, seance type of situation or, or a well, ghost hunting situation. a little bit, but a ghost hunting, yes. Yeah, just instill some but fear But also in a people. ghost movie, too. I think it would yeah. be great. You know, because you, you know how they have all... Doom, 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 <laughs> <laughs> then there's a half-naked girl running down the street and gets killed by the slasher. It's shocking. <laughs> They go hide in the barn with all the chainsaws. Yeah. I love that commercial. Yeah, all the that's, that's, commercial? Great, that's a Chains. great commercial. Let's go in the car with the keys around No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you had a ghost story on the ocean, you know, you'd have you know, oh, yeah. sea or, you know. I still, yeah, I agree with you. There's many ways to do it. So what nice I... Nice rotting corpse sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, that'd things. be a I, zombie. I, to, yeah. I, told zombie I, go, yeah. I told you I could go into the really bad things, but I didn't want it to. I was trying to be a nice boy about this. But well, you could put anything in there. Who the hell knows how, how what a rotten right. corp smells like? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the topics that are occurring at uh, Spirit Quest this year in search of. And you know, you know that the new In Search of series is out now, right? Yes. It is. Yep. Friday nights. Yep. On with the new Spock. Yes, the new <laughs> Spock replacing the old Spock. And Steve, uh, what's his face? Parsons. Parsons. Yeah. 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 He's on it too. Ah. So let's let's take one of these topics, and one of the topics we will be uh, presenting is in search of Bigfoot, which yeah. kind of fits in with Roxy. Yeah, how, how fitting. How fitting. How fitting. This will be presented by uh, Ken DeCosta from the uh, Rise Up Paranormal in down in Rhode Island. He'll be coming up to do this Bigfoot thing. So I want to know each of your thoughts about Bigfoot. What's, what's your, we'll start with Roxy since she gave me the free air conditioner. 
I too many <laughs> air conditioner. <laughs> it's now an air conditioner. <laughs> the air conditioner. Air conditioner. It does. Well, it does condition the air. It's, it does. It conditions your nose. It's not totally inaccurate. So, so no. what? What's your thoughts about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, whatever he is? I think that it's entirely possible. There's, uh, you know. I guess um, creatures or animals that are being discovered all the time that have roamed the earth that we don't know about. You know, never mind what they're still finding in the ocean. So right. I think it's in- entirely possible. Particularly, I mean, Ken and I, you know, just like we said, we came back from up in the North Woods. I mean, and, and you go deep into those woods, you can imagine anything being out there that is only seen once in a great while. So but that's the question you can imagine. Isn't it people's imagination, or, or does Bigfoot? really exists. I think there's a great possibility. Yeah. Ken, what do you think? Yeah, I think it is possible. Yeah. I mean, it's... We, who knows what's out there? You're from the I city. Mean, what would you know? Yeah, what would I know? Yeah. <laughs> we, we go to the country to get scared. That's it. Yeah. But this, I mean, but yeah, up where we were, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of acres of mm-hmm. just open woodland. Right. So you think it exists? Possibly? Possibly exists. Possibly. Possibly. What do you think? Do you just... Why not? I'll go with yes. You go to yes. It could exist. You go to yes on yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Lou? We came back with the story about that too. This runs against my current trend here, where we've talked about. Which we talked about it last week. Disagree with everything Ron said. No, <laughs> no. In fact, <laughs> my current trend has been to agree with you from the standpoint of we'll never be able to prove a lot of this stuff because okay. there is no, uh, there is no uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt proof. However, with a Bigfoot type of situation, there's the remains thing. Yeah. There's the residual, you know, that they, they have to live somewhere. Yeah. They have to set up some kind of camp. There, there has to be remains. And unlike the ocean, where things could die but and we'd never know one way or the other. If you said you're camped, then you're talking intelligence then. Well, they ha- deer have nests. Droppings, uh, even? Uh, droppings, yeah. Oh, but they have Bigfoot droppings everywhere. You can find places where all Go kinds of... internet, you can buy some in Bigfoot droppings. Oh, really? (laughs) There's a surprise. (laughs) Any kind of animal creates a nest, or you can find evidence of any kind of animal that you want if they exist in a particular ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So why have we come up with nothing yet? I know. That's the intriguing part, and that's the thing that really bugs me myself, actually. So I have no clue on it. But, you know, can They walk upright. They have... Yeah. uh, There has to be a level of intelligence. They stink, too, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I heard they stink. So yeah. hopefully you're refreshing Another candle smell for like us. <laughs> Sasquatch candle. Sasquatch candle. <laughs> so watch out when you open that air freshener. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, God knows <laughs> where they went with that. That might be, yeah, that might yeah. be attraction. I even smell it. But well, that's, the, plant smell like that's the thing for me. All those arguments are correct. We don't know what's out there, and right. you know, especially in the oceans. But on land, there's usually some evidence of, mm. of life or all animals have to have shelter. They have to have food. There'd be kills. There has to be droughts. Yeah, but there are creatures in the ocean that we don't know exist. I believe. I know, and, but if you have remains or or layers yeah, where they, uh, that's of, all happens in the ocean. Yeah, in the ocean, yeah. you're, you're difficulty problems. Who but knows? We, there could be a kraken down there. We have no idea. Really? Actually, there are there giant are squids. Yes. Yeah. Are. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, so uh, you're open to it, but you won't make a commitment. Right. You say yes or no. Do they exist? Yes. You got. I got to go one way or the other. Yeah, I got to go. One no. Way. Okay. And so maybe it doesn't work. So no. So okay. not. If this, I got to go one way or the other, my bet is no. No, not in this game. And, yep. and on that same reason, I'm going to say no too, because show me the body. That's what I want. So moving right along. And, uh, and by the way, Ken, I, I made a joke about you living in the city and everything, but <laughs> I was watching this this show on Netflix now, seventy two. Predators of the world of Asia, excuse me, mm-hmm. the most dangerous predators of the world. They actually raid them, yeah. and they have like rounds where you, you know what's yeah. going to go on. Fifty climbers. of them are about oh. this big, right? Oh, the stupid little spiders and all that crap. Yeah, well, uh, the the first show I saw was the the rhino, the Asian <laughs> rhino, yeah. which is a big ass thing. Yeah, right? the uh, hippos are pretty deadly. They're pretty dangerous. Uh, we're talking to Asia now, and this is there's no I'm hippos just, in Asia. I don't know. This okay. I'm just telling. You, I only right. saw one show, so this is it. So, <laughs> so we're geez. limited in advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just telling you some of the, the the ones that I saw. If you don't care, then I won't mention them. It's fine. <laughs> no, I right. care. Lord, just geez. trying to have a discussion. Yeah, the uh, yeah. So, anyways, they were uh, the orangutan, the a predator. Yeah, 
He was ranked of the seven, I think he was ranked. Oh, wait a second. Are these human predators or are these just predators in general? Human predators. Human predators. Human. Orangutans are killing most humans. Most dangerous. Most yeah. dangerous thing. Okay. Hmm. So anyways, uh, the rhino, the orangutan, the centipede. They got the stupid ass centipedes. The giant that centipede. Ooh, it's and they bad. kill people? Yeah, they got big claws and they bite you and they give you all this uh, poisonous crap in you. God. The sea urchin. The sea urchin. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, which is pretty dangerous. If you're in the ocean, you're fair game. Yeah, what else was there? Would it be a poisonous urchin? Yeah, they're all poisonous. Are they? Yeah. Hmm. Go touch one, find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, this? Ouch. The snake. This this snake, I forget the name of it. It's kind of. Uh, oh, there's always a snake. Yeah, a snake. He, he yeah. was up there and uh, whatever. And but, then they got the snakes that don't even do it the right way. They don't poison you, they just crush you to death. Yeah. <sighs> And slowly <laughs> giant anaconda yeah and the the worst was the uh um oh these this snake is even worse because what you do is you it has a blood thinner and it just thins your blood and you start bleeding everywhere oh. <laughs> until okay. everything well, fails uh, and they follow you around till you drop no they don't care they don't care <laughs> you just they just pissed you pissed them off they bit you and yeah. they're moved on okay <laughs> um but the most was the leopard that was the number yeah. one ended up number one but the interesting thing, cats, and, and this is crazy, but they actually go in the cities at night. The leopards? Leopards, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, they, it, it, they showed all this footage, and this is in Asia now. Well, know. these are cities that are right in the jungles. Well, we're talking India. We're talking some major so cities. So I'm here. stumbling out of an Asian bar. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which is entirely possible. Exactly. In the middle of the night. Exactly. And there are leopards waiting for me. You betcha. And they go to the city to hunt. Wow. So they actually they had a whole bunch of footage that was so cool. The animal control guy got got his ass bit by one and everything else. It was like, oh man, these. So guys. Now, you know what you do? You just bring a plastic grocery bag and do this at them, and they run away. You want <laughs> if they're anything like my cat. You want a bit? <laughs> <laughs> you want a bit? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I, I, all right. So, all right. So moving right along, and next one uh, we're going to talk about, and this goes on with the same crypto line since we were in the cryptoids is the Loch Ness Monster, which will be presented by Steve Parson. So you were just at a big-ass lake in, uh, in Maine, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, so what? You see any sea monsters? We saw loons. Ooh, <laughs> Looney Tunes. We saw yeah. them, we heard them. Mm -hmm. So sea monsters, what's your thoughts? Sea monsters, uh, lake monsters. And the premise we're working on here is it has to be yes or no. Yeah, but I want to know your thoughts, yeah. and you know, I don't just want a yes and no. I want a little bit of, you know, what, why right. your reasoning is behind it. Mm -hmm. Or this is a very quick show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I understand fully. I try to tell this to other hosts, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I understand the principle involved. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the short answer for me is yes. The long answer is Again, we're still discovering all sorts of species at the bottom of the ocean, different types of organisms and, and things that are millennia old that, when, you know, when you look at them, they're prehistoric in their own way. So for me, you know, we haven't plumbed the, the floor of every single ocean yet. Mm -hmm. So I think absolutely there's there's things down there that we don't understand. I will say a caveat to that is that sometimes if we don't understand what they I are. Love caveat. Caveat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we look at some of the more New England stories about, you know, sea monsters and Nessie and all of that. Sometimes they're just eels. It depends on how they're seen. So I, I think, you know, there's there's probably how bigger fish. How drunk the sailors are when they that see them. True. <laughs> that's true. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of misinterpretation that's happened over the years as well. But it, at, in the end, I think that it's totally possible. And even lake monsters as well? I think so, too. I mean, the the Moosehead Lake is 128 feet deep. Do they have a monster? I thought it was over know? 200 at some point. Is, is it at 200 I, at some point? Over points? 200 at some oh, point. Do they have a monster that you know about? Um, Not that I'm aware of. They, uh, they got moosey, yeah. Moosey. moosey. They got lots of moose. They do have lots Let's of moose. Let's start one. Yeah. <laughs> moosey. Yeah, I was up in Moosey Lake, and this big thing came out. Out of the water was like snake lake, but it had big antlers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. Moosey. Oh, Ken, what scientists are, are baffled. This is a merchandise line right here. Why are we giving out all kinds of great ideas here today? I think it's entirely possible. We don't know. The, we can't see the whole bottom Nessie of the Nessie with antlers. Lake. That's awesome. 
That's right. It's the moosehead snake. <laughs> oh, no. So you think it's a possibility? I think well, it's a possibility. Well, not possibility. Does it exist or not, do you believe? Um, well, if, if I have to go on evidence, no, but I think... I don't yeah. know what you're going. Just your own gut feeling. I don't I, really I think there give is. a crap. What, you know. I mean, they're still yeah. looking. They're still hunting, you know, Loch Ness and mm. Champlain and yeah. maybe moosehead. Moosey. 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 Oh, we got Champy. We could have Moosey. Yeah. Why every not? every state can have a, a, a lake monster. Okie Pokey, or whatever his name is. Okie Pokey? Yeah, it's a guy in, in Maine. There's a lot of them in uh, oh, Canada. A lot of drinking Pokey in Maine. Pinoco, yeah. Yeah, not in Maine, Canada. No, there's a lot of drinking in Canada. Yeah, that's for sure. We'll leave uh, in <laughs> Bay For sure. <laughs> that's right. Hey. Hey. So, Lou? I'm going no. No. For largely the same reason in that I, I understand the ocean thing. But even in the ocean thing, we get on a boat and we go out and we see whales every day. Yeah. Or there are people who have been on Salisbury Beach and Seabrook who are watching whales. Uh-huh. And shark down on the Cape, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're snacking. So even in a, a thing as large as the ocean, we get sightings of things. Mm-hmm. Oh, we do have sightings. A, a lot, Moosehead is a big lake. Loch Ness is a big lake. Mm-hmm. Champlain is a big lake. Yep. But it's still contained. And would there be just more evidence if there was something? Well, we in talk there. about the ocean, and and as far as uh, we can't find them and everything, but you know they could be you know mid mid level dwellers or, or right. bottom dwellers, so they, that's why we don't see them. Right. But with the evidence, uh, as far as the ocean part of it is, I, I truly believe they exist, and in some form or another, because they have. I found evidence. You know, they they cut up the belly of a uh, they a whale because they captured a whale and they, you know they whaled it. Mm-hmm. Can you say a word? Whaled it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They whaled it. You they go whaled whaling, it. so yeah, that can they be a found, verb. Yeah. They found you know something in the belly that was quite unusual. And in fact, that's how they found. I believe that's how they found the kraken or the giant squid was in the belly of a whale. The first initial proven evidence of it but they have yeah, creatures plus whales have up. scars from kraken yeah. right they, wasn't uh, not kraken no, yeah it's kraken kraken's okay it's just yeah. a, it's a norwegian word for uh you know it's the same thing giant squid but you yeah. know you know um but it's those have been told about for years and years and and so i i'm gonna i'm gonna go yes on this and that's kind of out in line for me. you're okay in the lake yeah in the in lake, lake too. yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's a, there's so many reports, and and the the thing that that I find intriguing is is that the the, the sightings are similar, uh, more snake like, and a lot of them with the horse's head, which is you know unusual. Oh yeah, but oh here we go. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is my belief, not yours. No, that's so fine. Don't dump on so, me. Moose's head. Don't you've seen this moose's in head. you've seen <laughs> this moosey. in the rest of your mod- modalities as well. There becomes a certain. Um, model for these things mm-hmm. and then it exists whether it exists or not okay like for example you 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 talked about it with <laughs> franklin <laughs> pierce <laughs> with franklin pierce up there we all get in a picture in our, in our mind of what it's kind of the mandela effect isn't it huh everyone thinks a lake monster is a snake-like thing with a brontosaurus head and stuff like that so everybody who sees things is going to put that overlay on it because that's the assumed shape of a lake monster. i just said it was hush hush head okay a horse head. Okay, fine. <laughs> I guess it's whether you believe it's a plesiosaurus or another creature. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. Whatever. Yep. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Uh, again, I I think lakes are contained no matter how big they are. So. No. Nope. Yeah. No, I think. And I firmly believe there's stuff in the ocean we don't know about. I think they exist. Okay. That's my thought. In some way or another. Well, you're putting me into a yes/no situation. I know. So. You're fine. Unfortunately, I gave you a chance, and you just crapped on mine. Wow. <laughs> Raining on his parade. <laughs> I let you speak. <laughs> thought this was an interactive exercise, but oh, apparently fine. not. No, this is a life-death experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so let's, let's leave this stupid world of ours and go up to space. UFOs. We have uh, In Search of UFOs by uh, MUFON, which is Greg... Berg Hahn and Joe Cambria, and they'll be pre presenting. Uh, that's a local chapter of something. Mufon? Mufon? Mufon, Mufon, whatever. Anyway, so UFOs, and we'll start once again with our scary godmother. Absolutely. That's I, it. I have, I have, <laughs> Absolutely. I have, I have no doubt. I have talked to 
far too many people um, in in the military. I've seen things, you know, over the years that I've wondered about. So I've seen I have. Things. Well, no, I have. Don't dump on me either. Well, let's not, let's not all get overly with, sensitive here. I'm, just, yeah. I'm agreeing with you. That's I, all. I, that didn't sound like you were agreeing with wow. me. Jeez. There's a difference. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely think so. There's there's so many infinite possibilities of what's out there in outer space. I think for anybody in in this probably going to be a strong statement, but I think for anybody to think that there isn't, I, I think you know you got your head in the sand. Wow, that's pretty strong. There, there's there's too much for us to think that okay, so we're just you know the only life out there in outer space. This one little teeny tiny planet. You know, compared to the entire universe, which we have no boundaries on whatsoever. We don't know how big and how vast it is. We can't be the only intelligent life out there. Hubble will let us know. Anyway, Ken? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've talked to too many people that have had experiences. So when you do these ghost tours, they tell you about UFOs too? Well, we've done UFO conventions as well. Oh. And we have met people on ghost tours that have talked about UFOs. Yes. There's another side of you. Mm hmm. UFO conventions. We li- we, yeah, we listen to it all. You crazy people, We yeah. are crazy. Well, we, know some, we, we know some UFO people, too. We do. UFO people. Hmm. I'm just saying. Hello? <laughs> is the question, do they exist, or <laughs> is the question, have they been here? Ooh, good distinction. That's the question. Whatever. You tell me what you believe in. Okay. This I, is, this unquestionably. Is other races and in- intellects exist. Okay. Law of large numbers. There's just no way around it. Yep. Whether they're visited here, I'm still going to go, I think yes, because I'm intrigued by uh, some of the leaps in understanding in our technology and in our knowledge. I'm, I, I grew up with Chariot of the Gods, so I, I guess that's ingrained in me. There are some things about our leaps in understanding that don't ring true to me. Hmm. That ha- there had to be some outside influence. Plus, um, parallel development in different societies and different parts of the earth that had no connection with each other. It's just, it's intriguing to me. Okay. You're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> right or wrong? Yep. <laughs> so it's me. Yeah. Uh, UFOs, I guess UFO meaning what? Some identify an object that's seen in the sky? Yeah, I believe people see stuff. Uh, However, do I believe alien life has come to Earth? Hell no. Who the hell would come over to here? I mean, I wouldn't if I was like, it's like ghosts. Why would you haunt that cemetery? Probably left in a hurry. Yeah, like, I don't know. Unless we get the scum at Earth. Maybe that's why they're going around mutilating cows. <sighs> Crop circles. Crop That's whatever. That's another story for another time. Well, would you, if us. you were going to visit another planet, would you go to the seat of the military first? Would I what? Would you go to the seat of the military first? Why would I abduct people? That's what I can't figure out. Well, we do it all the time as humans. We do it with animals because you have no regard for the life that's down there. Oh, they're so far advanced that we are just... We abduct animals all the time and we're lab do, mice. And do we're lab experiments mice. on them. So we're lab mice. Yeah, potentially. Well, they're going to have a... As, they said in Con- as Matthew McConaughey said, was it Matthew McConaughey or was it Rob Lowe? I think it was Rob Lowe in contact. Please don't mention that name in here. <laughs> Rob Lowe. No, I like Rob Lowe. Somebody, one of the characters said in contact, and what regard would you have for an anthill in Africa? You wouldn't. You'd just stomp it. you stomp on it, and you'd pay for it. They'd eat that crap out of you. <laughs> Those things are like yeah. poisonous red ants. That was a good movie, by the way. Which one? Contact. Which one was that? Excellent book and a good movie. Which one was it? Helen Hunt and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, what's the premise? Uh, first Contact. Yeah, they're all first contact. I figure that. <laughs> and is that the one that's in Mexico or something? No, she hears the radio signals, and then they build this ship for her to go, and she goes through this wormhole and meets her father on another planet and comes back, and what? they don't let her. They try to dispute that she actually had the journey. And huh? Maybe you didn't see that one. Maybe I didn't see that one. Well, There's yeah, so many contact it. ones. Good. Yeah, let's get Rob Lewin to tell. Yeah, he's a small part. <laughs> 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 all right, so put that on my list, contact. Yep. Yeah. Really? And you, you never read Contact either. I would think you'd Since find I that interesting. Since I don't read, that's, okay. uh, you know, a moot point. Yeah. I don't read many books, but I've I did read, read that one. Two books in my life. That's doc, Dr. Carl Sagan. I don't know if he's a doctor. Carl Sagan. Whatever. Yeah. I, am a, I absorb things. Okay. I absorb knowledge. So absorb I'm Contact. You'll sponge. enjoy it. <laughs> yes, I will. Despite Rob Lowe, you'll enjoy it. Yes, anyways. <laughs> All right, so we've moved on from that. Let's take a look at something more on the metaphysical side, which is kind of interesting. Ooh, slide down. 
What the hell happened here? How come I can't find it? Where did it go? Maybe the aliens took it. I think they did. Oh, here it is. Here it there go. you go. Oh, well, it's not going to metaphysics. Aliens, by the way, play into your Mandela effect quite nicely. You brought that up. I have no clue why. Because they were the ones who would be able to manipulate our mass memory. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> now they're freaking mass mini mental mental people. And now that we're on the subject. Why do you know so much about freaking aliens? Now that we're on the subject, in contact, they also d instruct us on Occam's razor. So, you know what Occam's razor is? Yes. The simplest explanation is most likely to be true, yeah, to yeah. dumb it down to yes, impossibly yeah, yeah. dumb levels. <laughs> so what's a, what's a more... Uh, what's a simpler, more believable explanation? Then what? People came down and manipulated our mass memories, or there's a time oh, quantum... Oh, I think it's a luminari, if you ask me. It's a luminari. <laughs> luminari. <laughs> no, it's a quantum veil opening. Yeah, fine. Whatever. Okay. I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, do you want opinions or do you not want opinions? I want opinions. I'm very much opinions. opinions. Right. I don't have to yeah. agree with them. I want no, them. that's fine. I Whether I want them or not, I mean, I want them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no show if I don't have them. Go to, that's your assignment. Go home and watch Contact tonight. I will you get homework. find Contact somewhere. Yeah. Anyway. He'll, make, he'll make contact. I'll make contact. I'm There's a lot of the different contact ones. What was that one first? Arrival? I know, but this was one is one good. Last out when they... Oh, Arrival. Yeah. Arrival was good. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, can we go back to this? Sure. Yeah. All right. So here's one, and this is... Interstellar. I, Have you seen Interstellar? You asked me. I don't remember that. Uh, that one will screw you up for a half a year. Which one is it? Well, don't, i got to get back. Matthew McConaughey. Okay, yeah. That has all kinds of quantum stuff going on in there and everything. No. I probably it, It'll it. take you a half a year to probably process this movie. It didn't impress me, though. <laughs> You know, a lot of these movies I saw that they're supposed to be so great, they're, like, not impressed. I didn't say it was great. It's just an interesting premise and the I way they thought. tried to present it. Yeah. All right. I'll find it. No. It See, I deliver. What's that? You guys yeah, but, ask, you but guys it's late, though. Look at this. I did the best I could here. We're running a, we're running four radio stations here. <laughs> All right, we're taking a break. Okay. We're taking a break. Coffee We'll get back to this. We'll be, we'll be right back. You'll listen to Ghost Chronicles Morning Edition right here on the Net New England Talks, and that was our fabulous... Uh, where is he? I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> Lou. No, Lou. What's his name? Kevin. 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 <laughs> Jeez. We'll be back. George, I need coffee. Uh, Thank you so much. That was so kind of me. All right, we'll be back. Yeah. Do you have a paranormal event, book, or something else you want people to know about? Then why not advertise it on Ghost Chronicles Radio? With over 150,000 downloads a month, get your message out to an audience that's interested in the subject. We have a plan at a cost that fits your needs. For more information, contact Ron Kolick at anyghostproject at comcast.net or call 978-455-6678. Are you seeing a ghostly apparition every time you look in the mirror? Are you terrified to realize that that pale, lifeless, lack of energy form hovering before you is in fact you? How would you like to be transformed? Healing begins from within, and it's never too late to start feeling good. Are you curious? Interested? Good. Don't wait another minute. Visit transformyourlifenow.org or contact Maureen. The email address is maureen at transformyourlife.org. Chronicles, the coffee edition. <laughs> I am your scary godmother, Roxy Zwicker, from I'm New not. England Curiosities. I'm going to try to take my time here because Ron tells me I always rush it, and he's in the midst of making coffee. Mm -hmm. You're finding us on the net, New England Maybe. Talks, mm -hmm. Facebook Live. And the producer, co-host, and barista of <laughs> Ghost Chronicles <laughs> Morning Edition, <laughs> apparently. Are That's Lou, and yes. Ken's over there making his coffee. Yes, and, I'm loving this. And we're having a, a very in-depth discussion. Well, yeah, we're looking at all the things that we never talk about. Never. Never. 
Anyway, where was I before the break that I got interrupted? UFOs, and we were talking about contact. We already did that, right? Talking about UFO right. movies. And if you want to reach us on Sunday. the show, you can dial in at 978-659-0072 or send us your questions or your thoughts to our Facebook Live page. Oh, you can stop by the station with pastry. <laughs> there's Go pastry ahead. downstairs. <laughs> if you wanted pastry, there's muffins downstairs. That's donuts? Funny. Apparently the coffee was not enough. I'm not bothering Kevin again, but there are muffins downstairs. No, Pick one up on the way out. I think there's pumpkin, too. Because <laughs> it's that time of year. And then we're it getting is. there. Yeah. Pumpkin season. Where was I? You were on UFOs. Sunday or something. Oh, yeah, Sunday. I was looking at Sunday. <laughs> right there. All right, so I'll, I'll, this is the perfect one so that I can have my coffee. Uh, <laughs> on Sunday at Spirit Quest, we will have In Search of Messages from Beyond uh, by Laura Worcester, who will be doing a gallery hmm? reading. So we'll go right to Roxy, and I can almost guarantee the answer on this one. <laughs> wow! Do you believe in messages from beyond, Roxy? I don't think she does. No, I'm sorry. I don't believe in them. You don't? Okay. <laughs> why is that, Roxy? You just Everything she does is built around that. Do you that. need more cream? Um, one more would be <laughs> There great. is one more. There you go. Thank you, sir. Um, You're yes, welcome. of course. That's my. I've had way too many personal experiences, almost on a daily basis now. So. Right. So, I don't, you you believe in them, right? Do you believe that you are talking to spirits? Yes, I do. Really. I do. Okay. It's, you know, it's, it's fine. You you have to. What do you mean that's fine? I no, to, no. What do I do? Uh, well, it's, it's very dismissive. <laughs> What am I doing today? Why does everybody hate me here? I hate you, but I was just like, yep, yeah, okay, dismissive. whatever. I'm not hating you. I have a discussion. I'm That's just right. having a discussion. Dismissive. You've asked some intricate questions that need... Evidently, I'm very dismissive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God. I, I think for people that don't understand or people that are skeptical, to be in there when you're having that experience and to see it unfold and oftentimes things that you just don't know... And that's really where my belief comes from, let alone, you know, my own personal experiences, things that I've seen. But if I'm finding out specific information about someone while I'm in a spirit communication session, you can certainly dismiss it as, you know, maybe it's a higher self thing. To me, the sense and the energy and everything that I'm going through in that moment tells me that there's a spirit that's there. And you can choose to believe it or not, but it happens wow. more often than not in my world. There, I guess. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know so, I choose to spend my Monday morning here. So when when did you first, I mean, like, did it scare the crap out of you when you first, get your first message? You know, some guy comes in and says, I want peanut butter. <laughs> Sometimes it still oh, does. Or whatever the message was. Or whatever it was. <laughs> it, it wasn't, it it wasn't a message. It's what I saw. And I was like 10 years old and I saw a little girl and I kept seeing her over and over and I talked to her. And then my mother told me, you know, there's nobody Wait, out there. So you, you talked to her. Okay. I did. Did she talk back? Yes, she did. So that would be a first communication with spirit. Then. Yes. Okay. And, and again, this was a sighting that was as if there was a girl there. I mean, it's not a ghostly apparition, no. someone floating there. It's like there's another person there, but they're not. Exactly. Like yeah. it was another kid on the playground right. Is, right. is who I was talking to. And she told me she lived oh, there. Coffee. Same same, same thing as, you know, somebody would, would have an encounter. It wasn't anything weird. It wasn't anything spooky. No. And the more and more my mom finally said, you know, um, you're not talking to anybody out there. And I'm like, N I'm, I swear I did. So the last time I talked to her, after we went and found out that a little girl that matched her description died in a pond outside the building that I lived in years previous, mm -hmm. I told her, I said, you can't be here because you're not alive, because you're dead. And she was gone, like right before my eyes. Oh. It's like you shut off a television. She faded? That's freaking She was just me. gone. Really? She thought she was alive and you just killed her. I know. Well, and that set the premise for the wow. work that she I do. She still feels bad, actually. I feel horrible. Don't make me feel any worse about it. You mean, I'm dead? <laughs> kind of what happened. I'm no, that isn't kind of what happened, Ken. I didn't, <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. You sure? Positive. You remember you I was 10. there. I was there. Yeah, you're only 10. Maybe you I remember a lot of changes. things. My memory doesn't change. Okay. Oh, okay. my God. Wow. I feel persecuted over here. You're not. We love you. <laughs> You've got a memory like a steel trap. I do. I remember too much. Really? 
I do. I gotta be careful what I say. Yeah. 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 Everybody, yeah. everybody better be careful not, what they say. Not gonna happen. All right, so moving right along, that we've got your answer on that. Ken, do you believe in messages from beyond? I do. Mm-hmm. And, and just by being around this, they come from dead people. Yes. Okay. I mean, I don't know the yeah. whys or the hows, but uh-huh. I mean, I've seen so, so much. So, so not just why, like why do you believe then? Hmm? Why do you believe? Because of just because of the messages that come through. You don't ac- get the messages, do you? The I don't. The accuracy of them, from what I've seen. I mean, not just Roxy, but with other gifted mediums that we all know here. Mm, gifted, I like that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did Ken, did you? I mean, if they, if they were wrong all the time, I'd be like, this is this is bull. But yeah. <laughs> it comes through and it's right on. So How Ken, is that? So, Ken, did you believe in it before I came along? I was open to the possibilities. Um, growing up in Salem, yeah, I'm like, it has to be, you know, there, was, there was something to it. You know, There's I grew too up, much crap going on there. I mean, we had covens in high school, so it was, really? you know, where else you get that? So it was always open to that. And that was the that. football team. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are called the witches. <laughs> are they? Yes, they are. All the Salem sports teams are called the witches. <laughs> Pretty cool. Not, huh? not the Warlocks? Not the witches. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The not witches. the mm-hmm. We're oh, the witches. Oh, Lord. Go to get you, you witch. <laughs> wow. I know. Sad world we live in. All right, so yeah, that's why you believe. So, yeah, you put a spell on the Panthers. Go for it, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely from what I've witnessed. Panthers. So it's coming from someone... Outside themselves, definitely. All right, that's fair enough. Lou, what about you? Without parsing this too tightly, and Roxy's touched on my main area of skepticism. W- that without this, insulting her? No, no. Roxy <laughs> touched upon she's sensitive today. my uh, main area of skepticism, where this might be a higher self or an internal mm-hmm. type of communication. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I got to go one way or the other, I'm going to go yes. I, Really? Yeah, I, I like the ocean. There are things the about re- this that we reason? don't understand. Well, see, the thing is, whether it's an actual separate entity, and to me, whether it's a separate entity or it's a higher self thing, the results are the same. Yeah. So it's kind of tomato, tomato. It's kind of the same thing. But the logical part of me can wrap my mind around a uh, higher self. And it, I use this example all the time. The woman who called in the show, and she's talking about smelling her father's pipe tobacco. Mm-hmm. Uh, she believes that's her father, and she's welcome to that. I believe that's a uh, that's a memory trick, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's internal, what's external, is important mm-hmm. to me in this discussion. But I, I, I'm not ready to say no, so I'm going to say yes. I, mean, I think we all are the higher self. So. You know, I just since you brought that up, I just realized that we can take call and so we could have had people contribute to this show. She gave the number like ten minutes ago. She did. Yeah, yeah, we have that technology. What was I? Oh, Mickey Mike. You were sitting right there. <laughs> yeah. Was it really? Yep. Mm. Told you I needed coffee. All right. Told you I'm sensitive. So that brings me back to. What about you? Me. Oh, yeah. A message just there. Give me a okay. chance. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Not anyway, the hook. That, th- that's an intriguing story. I find it fascinating, but in all the work I do, um, I don't know, so I got to say no, that there are dead people talking to us. I believe that we are getting messages from somewhere, uh, but I, I don't know. A central switchboard? Possibly. You know, you talk about a greater consciousness, and that's kind of what I'm going that way, and, and it, it's really interesting because that fits in kind of with my. Catholic religion, too. I was going to say, yeah, yeah your Catholicism mandates a belief in this. Yeah, it kind of does, that we all become one. We all become, mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. And Well, um, your, Catholic, your Catholicism also mandates a belief in an external to us. There's another, there are angels, there right, are, yeah, there's yeah. a God. But, there's. but it's more than that. I think the greatest consciousness is kind of like, I don't want to say it because uh, I, not sure how it works it's like anybody does <laughs> but you know we become part of god by doing this this is the whole thing it's like you know they say when you go to heaven you're going to stay like i always, always remember my mom was uh in the re- rehab and and late one night we closed the place <laughs> yeah they threw me out but uh i always remember asking when you go to heaven mom is you gonna be with dad and she said Maybe some of the time. <laughs> but I, then I thought about it, and it's like, uh, 
okay, maybe that's not the thing. It's because you become such part of a greater thing that individuals aren't really, uh, this is going to sound terrible, but aren't really important as combined right. to the, the greater thing. In other words, we're still, in other words, our love is, this sounds really weird, love is to everyone, not just a particular person, and, and love is probably not the word I was looking right. for, but that we're all connected to that thing, and we are all that thing. And mm -hmm. maybe that's where all these messages are coming from. And I'll, you know, I, I, I've been doing these red light seances for uh, over three years now with Leslie Martin and, and myself. And, uh, and you know, I, I, what I, I always call myself a dumb medium <laughs> and, and, and that I do get stuff that comes through. A lot of mine is on the, the visual plane mm -hmm. rather than the, the audio plane. So um, it's, it's a little different. But I am open to it, but I can't really put my control button on that and say, yeah, they're coming from dead people. I, I can't know if I can see, say that. And that's... Well, it's, it's, it's tough. Even if it comes from a collective, it could still manifest to an individual as an individual manifestation. So wow. It's, so it's a tough call. It sounded, Ron, like you were just talking about conviction rather than belief. In other words, it oh, sounded like conviction. what I think I heard you say, and you can tell me if, if I'm wrong, what I think Ooh. I heard you just say was, I haven't had anything that's convinced me yet. And I think the question is here, what do you believe? Cause, convinced that it comes from a dead person? Yeah. Have you had a communication with a spirit from a past person? Do you believe you through, have? Through mediums, possibly. Uh, you sensing things, uh, yeah. but you know I've seen apparitions. But can you put all that together to say that you know dead people are communicating with us? Mm -hmm. I think. Oh, well, now that I said that, <laughs> well, I was going to say. I, I you, look at yeah, no, I, I I talk about messages from beyond, and and, and you think about you know things that. You know, like the penny from the heaven thing, where mm -hmm. you do get signs from things. So, I don't know. It's so freaking muddled. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I'm not ruling out that mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. And, and I, I want it to believe that it exists because that's what I do. Right. <laughs> but um, I'm still got that skeptical side to me that, uh, you know, are there dead people walking amongst us telling us things? Or is this something else that we're tapping through? This, this people who are part of the greater consciousness, okay? And that's where we're getting our information from is this thing. And I think that explains a lot of things, like reincarnation is, is why we have these people who have these lives is, is that tapped into that greater consciousness, that, that life that lived at another time. They're getting all that information, maybe a frequency thing. You know, mm -hmm. we, we talk about frequency and mediums, and, uh, and maybe you are tuned into that particular frequency of that person and maybe that each part of the greater consciousness like this the light like light spectrum if you break it all down it's different colors but it's all light mm -hmm. so maybe the greater consciousness is like that maybe it's a series of frequencies that each individual in the greater consciousness is given up wow this is really yeah, well, some, sometimes it's called levels of consciousness. So what happens when I have or, coffee or in the morning? Some, <laughs> some other definitions they call it the planes, different astral planes. Yeah, so astral planes. I mean, frequency it's, it's, planes. It's, it's def definitions and in, in how we define different words things. for the same thing. Yeah, you know, it's 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 strange there's, stuff. There's two. I, that's why I love doing this. Is because mm -hmm. there's, there's so many questions. Mm -hmm. There's two areas that fascinate me about this discussion. One of which, and I don't have a big enough handle on it to take it to any depth, is the current quantum thinking which is that we create a lot of of what's in front of us mm -hmm. and we call it we call it out you of know, quark, you, quarks and you made and fun of together. me when you and steve were in the vault you beat the crap out of me because i was green with that and you no you took it to a level that i wasn't willing to accept <laughs> oh yeah uh well you couldn't answer whether the I earth is like round you. or not i didn't so like your tongue that was good. <laughs> the other part that fascinates me is the biological answer to this because what we know is thoughts change our biology and i was reading this piece the other day about cats and it said that cats do not like their water next to their food we talked about this right mm -hmm. and the reason they don't like their water next to their food is because they believe that if there's their food is dead and if the dead is next to the water the water could be contaminated mm -hmm. and i'm wondering how this tabby in new jersey has this behavior hmm. that had to have been passed on 
through ancestry. I mean, generations and How generations. How about a bad experience? And generations ago. Well, they said cats in general, not a specific cat that had an experience. They yeah, said but I've, cats never, in general. I've never witnessed that, so I don't yeah. agree with it. I mean, that's that's my opinion. But can we not accept that? So my reality, if you ask me if that was okay, true fine. or not, I would say no. Fine, I'll let you have that. But can we? Can you agree with me that uh, learned behaviors we've seen in animals are passed on through heredity? There are certain instincts it's that animals on. have that, absolutely. that comes from their ancestry. It's absolutely, absolutely Generation passed on. Gen and it's passed on in human, not just... Thing. How do we know that things right. are hot? How do we know that things right. are, you know, we learned. So well, is that experience. part of this picture here, is that talking to us? Is our, is our ancestry talking to us through biology? I have no idea. Say all of the above. And by the Probably way, you grew, we all grew up with our parents, and we all get to the point where we, we, um, uh, we state things that they state. We know how they react. I was kind of left on the doorstep, so I'm not sure if I grew up with my parents. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I kid my floated down the river in a basket. I kid much. my children about it all the time. I say you're going to be telling things to your kids that I told you all the time, and you're going to you're going to yell at me when you do it. And, and my daughter's like, I already do it, <laughs> you know. And so my I'm speaking to them constantly just through our upbringing and just you know our, our experience together. Okay, I know we're running out of time. How much time we get there, you kid? Four. 40. So do we want to do the ghost story of the day? Sure. In this con construction right Sounds like a good fit. Discussion right now. <laughs> We're so, talking about ghosts. And so without we can do further it in like ado, three minutes? Three we are, minutes? Yeah, three minutes. You got three minutes. Well, oh, conduct, this, huh? conduct a can oh, in the Lord. ghost story oh, of the Lord. day. Oh, Lord. What's so, today's date? It's all mocked. Today would be the 20th. The 20th. The Shanghai Tunnels, Portland, Oregon. Hey, Roxy knows about this stuff. So does Luke. Yeah. Underground tunnels buried beneath the streets of Portland, Oregon, are believed to be one of the most haunted locations in America. Since it's well known that haunting and history go hand in hand, it's no surprise that these secret passageways a bunch of cliches there. and old holding cells would be overflowing who wrote this thing? paranormal uh. phenomena. Yeah, who did this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> According to A&E, a world of terror lay beneath the streets of Portland from the 1870s to the 1940s. The term Shanghai originated at this time when drunk or unsuspecting men and women <laughs> fell through trap doors on the street. <laughs> uh, wow. Crimper, someone who abducts for profit, would then seize the victim and haul him or her away. More often than not, the prisoner was beaten, raped, and sold to the highest bidder. That was the business model? Wait for someone to get drunk and fall through the street and then roll them? It yep. worked. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> A special process to break the spirit of the strong-willed women was created. Oh, I'd the, love to hear about this. Yeah, they were locked in the darkened 4x4 cell. The shoes were removed, and the floor of the cell was littered with crushed glass. Ew, a nice. deterrent to escape, indeed. What kind of candle can we use for that? <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> uh, let's see. Once the women were made ready, they were sold as prostitutes to other countries. But that's not all. The numerous passageways and rooms in the tunnels were also opium dens, places where clients could escape the scrutinizing eye of the law. But these, but are these tunnels haunted? Many say yes. Today, these underground dirt channels have become a paranormal enthusiast playground. Many who have taken tour have reported feeling ill. Others have said they felt an uncomfortable feeling of adrenaline coursing through their system as they have an inexplicable desire to escape something unseen. There have also been reports that a few of the tourist guides have experienced so frightful an ordeal with the otherworldly that they've quit on the spot, refusing to return. However, if you find yourself intrigued and plan to visit this haunted location, do not venture off on your own. The ghost of the ever-vigilant Crimper may claim you as his next victim. Ooh, that was a spooky one. Ooh. Yeah, these tunnels are like big deals. Can I comment, I got 30 seconds, can I comment on your thought that fear attracts fearful things? What the hell happened here? Like attracts like? <laughs> no, I remember we talked about this earlier. Yeah. What happens is with fear, you engage, you know, people have different terms for it, you, you, in, you engage the monkey brain, the lizard brain. And what the lizard brain does is it th threat generates. So, and so you're looking for the bear in the back of the cave. So your antenna is way up on things that might scare you. You're very open to that sort of thing. And that's our final thought of the day. You have been listening to Ghost Chronicles <laughs> on the net, morning edition on the net. And remember, where can people go for Spirit Quest to uh, Can you let me get my out? spiel out here? Okay. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> Spirit Quest 2018 <laughs> in search of September 28th to the 30th. 
get tickets at neghostproject.com. The letter N, the letter E, ghostproject.com. The opinions expressed in the show were not that <laughs> of <laughs> me. <laughs> we'll be back next week, hopefully. You got any final words there, young lady? Yes, and I will be at Spirit Quest doing dream interpretation on Sunday the 30th. Ooh. So Ooh. I will see you <laughs> Good there. Good subject. Yeah. Never mentioned before. Yeah. You're the first to find out. I right like here. It. Breaking news. <laughs> when news breaks, we fix it. Are we it. done? Yes. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Stay spooky. to ghosties, long-leggedy beasties, and things that go bump in the night. Deliver us, good Lord.